A member of the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's cabinet has confirmed the Premier's Sunday trip to Saudi Arabia. Netanyahu's Education Minister Yuav Gallant told the Israeli media that Netanyahu has met with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. The minister called the meeting an amazing achievement, as it is the first one between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Israeli media early reported a meeting releasing aviation tracking data of a brief a trip of a business jet from Tel Aviv to Saudi's coastal city of Neom. Reports saying that Mossad chief uh, Yose Cohen was also accompanying Netanyahu. The meeting is seen as the U.S. administration's last-ditch efforts to discuss normalization of ties between Tel Aviv and Riyadh. Now we'll have a couple of guests to discuss this and get some insight. I'll be joined by Aleja Magnier, journalist and political analyst from Brussels. And also we'll have uh, Said Mohsen Abbas, journalist and commentator out of London. Welcome both to the show, gentlemen. Let's go to Brussels. Uh, Alija, this uh, official, in the Minister of Education, if I remember right, uh, Mr. Gallant, is calling this first uh, meeting between uh, Netanyahu and uh, MBS an amazing achievement. What kind of an achievement and how amazing could it be for the Palestinians? I think it's very far from being an achievement. Um, the relationship between Saudi Arabia and Israel is not new. The contact between the two are very regular since ages. Uh, it's coming out now, but it serves different purposes. First of all, in my opinion, I think it is an adverse to Naom uh, mega city that is uh, planned by Mohammed bin Salman. It's a $500 billion a plan. It's also um, a support for Netanyahu's domestic crisis. We saw how one of his aides said, while Netanyahu is uh, making peace, uh, Benny Gantz, the defense minister, is playing politics because Netanyahu is accused of corruption and Benny Gantz wants to open an investigation into the corrupted deal of the uh, submarine and naval deal uh, that Israel did, and Netanyahu has been accused of corruption uh, many times, and uh, there are people waiting outside uh, his house since several months. It's a way also to divert the attention. It's also a support for Pompeo, Mike Pompeo, who was also present, and he is looking forward to become a politician, and uh, his movement in the last a uh, week or so by visiting several states uh, why the administration is leaving doesn't make any sense. And also it is, uh, we know that um, the president-elect Joe Biden is not very uh, a fan of uh, Mohammed bin Salman and it's a way to protect him by, uh, by pushing um, Crown Prince um, uh, under the skirt of Netanyahu and offer him a kind of a protection uh, so can Saudi Arabia can continue enjoying the, the unlimited support of the Americans with the support of the Israelis. We heard yesterday the, Prime, the foreign minister of Saudi Arabia saying we have excellent relationship with Israel. In fact, Israel has been supportive of Saudi Arabia and vice versa. Since many years, Saudi supported the Israeli war on Lebanon in 2006 against the Lebanese and against Hezbollah. And last, uh, there was the G20 summit in Saudi Arabia a day before, and we saw also the bombing of the Houthi of a wing missiles against uh, Jeddah that was 1,000 kilometers from uh, Sana'a, and the distance between Jeddah and Neom is also 1,000 kilometers. So also that information covers up a little bit the damage that the Houthi can cause to the Saudi in retaliation to the largest humanitarian crisis we are seeing in Yemen. Okay, now let me uh, move over to London to Said Mosa and Abbas. Uh, um, Mr. Abbas, uh, these are the last days of the Trump administration at the Oval Office in the White House. and. Uh, 
is this uh, could this kind of hint at uh, Saudi's willingness to uh, join the UAE and Bahrain uh, and uh, kind of sign this so-called normalization deal with Tel Aviv or what? Well, it's uh, certainly been on the cards. Had Donald Trump uh, clean cut won the election, uh, we still don't know what the actual conclusion of that will be, by the way. But uh, had he won, of course, Saudi Arabia was in. Uh, a prime position, really, to join the UAE in Bahrain, without a doubt. Um, as it stands, it was interesting that Saudi Arabia didn't congratulate Biden straight away. I'm not sure we should read too much into that, but it was a, a reality. Um, this relationship, though, between Saudi Arabia and Israel, let's not forget, Saudi Arabia was born from Zio Western imperialist maneuvers, you know, First World War, Second World War, as far back as that. Uh, in order to capture the oil, the Zaire Western imperialists uh, nurtured their own, uh, if you like, Arab uh, rulers in Saudi Arabia, overthrew the Ottomans, etc., in that area, and took control of this effectively fossil fuel in the Middle East. Uh, according to Hyrits, uh, Saudi Arabia's associations with uh, Israel have involved regular meetings between their officers, military officers, in the joint war room where Jordan, Saudi Arabia and the United States coordinate most of their uh, military uh, endeavors in the Middle East. Uh, in 2016, um, some Arab, uh, Saudi Arabian journalists, or actually uh, Arab journalists generally, reported that uh, the Saudi Arabians had started shifting their tone towards Israel and started to criticize anti-Semitism in Arab countries, for instance. And some sections of the Israeli media described it as an apparent media campaign by the country to shape a positive public opinion for deepening of ties between the two nations. Trade-wise, uh, let's not forget that although on the surface there is a Saudi boycott of Israel, Saudi Arabia doesn't, you know, uh, it is actually announced that the end of its bans on Israeli goods and services are, are in place uh, due to its application to the World Trade Organization uh, not long ago, a few years ago. So on many levels, the groundwork has already been prepared for the formalization of Saudi Arabian Israeli, if you like, ties. Now, of course, Saudi Arabia is being used by the Israelis ultimately as part of their Yinon plan. And if you, if you take a really skeptical view, you'd say that uh, uh, Tel Aviv, the Zionist movement, uh, the Zion Western movement, has long since occupied Mecca, Medina, the, and Saudi Arabia, you know, even the sacred sites of Muslims themselves, because uh, they, they were the victors uh, after the, the world wars. And since then, they have uh, de facto been the guys pulling the strings in the background uh, and all of the wealth of Saudi Arabia, let's just say, for instance, three trillion dollars worth of um, real estate the Saudi Arabians have invested in America is just one sign of the, the loot that the, uh, the, the Al Saud family has committed against uh, the, the Saudi peoples, selling most of what they own into the coffers of the Americans and the Zionists, no doubt, indirectly, because uh, Israel can't survive without American financial support. This is a fact. So on so many levels, you can see already that there are huge connections, if not direct. Now they're simply, of course, bringing all this out into the open because they're in an uh, existential, uh, uh, if you like, uh, survival battle, uh, given that the axis of resistance has risen much to the annoyance of Zion Western imperialism, along with Yemen, along with Iran, along with Syria and Iraq. Of course, they, they face a major struggle to continue the hegemony the Zaya Western uh, uh, Saudi hegemony of the Middle East. That's not so easy for them to carry out now. And uh, of course, the Saudis are having to run to their, their masters even more openly because also the Muslim world now pretty much knows, uh, mm -hmm. given the Saudis' lack of support for Palestinians and their support for Daesh and their continued uh, uh, wrecking of the Middle East, um, they all know where Saudi right. Arabia really stands, and it's in, in the in the Zaya Western camp. Okay, appreciate your comments and insight. We had uh, Elijah Magna, journalist and public analyst from Brussels, and Said Mohsen Abbas, journalist and commentator who joined us out of London.